the Capitol Building, the Washington Memorial, the Watergate Hotel, all iconic places here in Washington DC, but perhaps one of the most recognizable of them all is this place, the White House. It's been used by every single US president since John Adams. But one of the most interesting things I found out is that it could be haunted. Roosevelt, Hoover and Winston Churchill all complained about ghostly goings on. And more recently in 2009, Michelle and Barack Obama apparently were kept awake by things that went bump in the night. So could it be the ghost of Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> Lincoln was sworn in as the 16th President of the United States in 1861 with a grand ceremony at the Capitol Building. He held office at the White House, or the President's Palace as it was then known, until when in 1865 at the Ford's Theatre he met his fate during the performance of Our American Cousin. And here's the man himself inside the Lincoln Memorial. Behind me, it's walking distance from the White House, so really close. And it's designed after the ancient temples of Greece. Once you get inside, there is a huge sculpture of the former president. And some say that his hands are signing two letters of the alphabet, his initials, A and L. Washington itself may have been gripped by modernity, but as you walk around these iconic landmarks, you can't help but be touched by the penetrating sense of history and the classical elegance of it all. The city is also home to those enigmatic branches of US intelligence, the CIA and FBI. So if you fancy yourself as either a bit of a Bond or maybe even a Scully, then where better to come than the International Spy Museum? Now, this is a car that many people will recognize uh, yes. from the Bond films, the DB5. About 5% of the museum, we, we take up with pop culture items movies, books, film, okay. because that's how the public generally is introduced to espionage. And one of the exhibitions you've got here is, uh, is the car with the different compartments. Yes. Now, that's uh, a replica of something that's real, isn't it? It is depicting various ways in which people conceal themselves in cars to smuggle themselves out of East Berlin. It's, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. And this is a female spy, isn't it? This was the actual transmitter. Uh, used by a woman named Virginia Hall. Um, after the war, uh, she was awarded this, the Empire Medal. She was also decorated by the Americans. SOE felt it was too dangerous for her to continue operating, and so they brought her out. And then she was recruited by the Americans, OSS, and she went back in. After OSS was disbanded, she joined the American CIA and was there for a few years and then retired from wow. there. Wow, so yeah. a life of espionage. A life of espionage, very much so. And great heroism. Yeah. yeah. The city's prominence on the political landscape dates back to when George Washington himself signed the Residence Act in 1790, allowing a permanent seat for the government of the United States. He would oversee the selection from Mount Vernon, his home some 15 miles south of the city at the end of the George Washington Memorial Parkway. The parkway is one of many designated scenic byways that travel through America's capital region, an area that covers Maryland, Virginia and Washington DC. Aside from the picturesque scenery and unrivaled views of the Washington DC skyline, the parkway also offers the opportunity to visit Arlington National Cemetery, the final resting place of John F. Kennedy, and the charming 18th century seaport of Alexandria, with its cobbled streets and riverside cafes. The byway itself is an easy 25-mile drive and hugs the Potomac River, offering breathtaking views of the landscape that at one time George himself would have gazed upon. George Washington's great-grandfather came from England and settled on what's called the northern neck of Virginia and in the 1700s, early 1700s, he bought 5,000 acres in this part of Virginia. And when you were given land from King Charles II, you had to build a structure, plant a crop and live here for three years. And uh, he did that and then unfortunately George Washington's father died and so it was inherited by George Washington's older half-brother Lawrence Washington. He unfortunately died at the age of 34, so at the age of 22, George Washington inherited a very modest farmhouse. He took the roof off of that house and built a second floor. And then in the 1770s, he expanded the outer wings 
And today, the people that own Mount Vernon, a, uh, an organization called the Mount Vernon Ladies Association, feel <clears throat> that this is the way the house would have looked on the last day of his life, December 14, 1799. But what really surprises visitors is that the colors are very, very vivid. Two colors tend to dominate. One's called verdigris green, and the other color is uh, Prussian blue. The only room that's very uh, classically uh, white is their private bedchamber, and we feel that Martha was responsible for the decoration of the bedchamber. And Martha's story is fascinating in itself. A strong-willed determination to support her husband led her to be by his side on the battlefield during the American Revolution. Their stories are told at the Mount Vernon Education Centre and Museum, which houses an impressive display of exhibits, historical artefacts, reconstructions and modern-day visual effects. Now, you might be able to notice that uh, his eyes follow you as you walk around this arc. I'm not 100% sure how it works. It is slightly odd. I think it's just something to do with the image being blasted onto something that's concave. But I've been trying to get my head around that and I still can't work out how it works. All I can say is I'm quite glad I'm not here at night. And so from one of the most recognisable homes on the planet, the White House, to here, Martha Washington's fairly humble kitchen garden. Along this journey, I've discovered that, of course, America has been built on the backs of some very great men, but I like to think some very great women as well. <laughs>